What's going on, everyone? Thanks for stopping by to check out the Fly Fishing Show. In today's episode, I interview Darren McEachern, who is a professional fly tire special, specializing in salmon and steelhead flies. Don't miss out early on when Darren talks about his amazing Streamers 365 project, and he gets into a short uh, review of Warren Duncan poetry reading while tying flies. Uh, it is truly amazing. You got to check this out. So without further ado, here's the interview with Darren from PiscatoralFlies.com. How's it going, Darren? Good. How are you doing, Dave? Good, good. Uh, Darren uh, specializes in steelhead and salmon fly tying, uh, among other things. And today we're going to get into, uh, we're going to talk a lot about fly tying and, uh, you know, just kind of dig into a lot of these things. I know I talk to quite a few people as I teach people, uh, you know, about fly tying and there's a lot of common questions that come up and I, I'd like to just dig into some of those and maybe get into a little bit of your background, if that sounds good to you. Absolutely. All right. So, um, so yeah, just if you could start us out here, maybe just bring us back, um, you know, to how you got into, you know, fly tying and fly fishing and this whole thing and just give us, uh, give folks an idea of your background and, and you know, how you got started. Yeah, well, I mean, I've been a lifelong fisher. I think I caught my first fish when I was three or four years old. Nice. And uh, I grew up in, or well, I started in Prince Edward Island, which is just a small island on the east coast of Canada. So we've got lots of little brook trout creeks that flow through there. Uh-huh. And I mean, we, we didn't do anything fancy. You basically go out in the woods, grab a stick and get a piece of string and basically you're you're dapping worms into these little creeks that you can jump across but it's pretty incredible you know you've got some pretty decent sized brook trout in there you know and the first one i ever caught was probably about a 14 inch brook trout nice and i thought it was just the greatest thing you know (laughs) yeah um but from there it's basically i kept fishing throughout my life and uh when i met my wife her dad was into fishing, so I got to know him through fishing. And uh, at, just at some point, I thought, you know what, I think it'd be kind of cool to try fly fishing. Um, but I had some health problems along the way, and uh, I ended up needing to get a liver transplant. Mm-hmm. So uh, I had that in 2002, late 2002. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I got home, I had a lot of time on my hands, so I thought... It might be kind of interesting just to check out this fly tying thing. So I had no experience with it. Mm. Um, I think I had seen it once or twice at a sportsman show. And I thought I thought it looked pretty cool, you know. So I went on eBay and ordered a, uh, probably the cheapest little fly tying kit that I could find. Sure. And uh, when that came, I just basically set up shop in my living room and think the first day I tied for like three or four hours straight and my back was just absolutely killing me and but uh you know it it uh took hold right away so I don't think I've gone more than a couple days without tying flies since then that's awesome yeah wow that's cool so I guess that's kind of one of the things about fly tying it it kind of is the kind of that meditative or relaxing thing for you not only is it I guess uh, a business, but you know, you've been doing it long enough now. Um, is that kind of how you, how, you know, kind of soothing. It sounds like you went through quite a ordeal in 2002 and this was kind of your, uh, part of the process, the healing process, so to speak. Yeah, it was, it was good therapy, you know, and, uh, I was, I had a lot of hours on my own, so this was a good way to fill time and actually do something a little bit productive. And it might've been in the back of my mind to maybe do this as a business down the road, but yeah. I, I soon found out that there was a bit of a learning curve and I wouldn't, uh, you know, like the first few years of flies were definitely all flies just for learning. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, yep. it took a while, quite a while before I was comfortable even giving someone else a fly to use. But, sure. did, you know, did you, um, this is a good, uh, kind of topic because, you know, there are a lot of people that are probably going to listen to this they're just getting started so you pretty much did you just grab you know some youtube videos and watch a few 
basic videos and do it that route or did you have kind of any anybody to help you along when you got started first couple years well back in the day in 2002 there wasn't really oh, much right. of a presence of youtube even hmm. so what i actually did is i went and i went to the bookstore i picked up uh, i think it was dick tallier's uh fly tying for beginners perhaps uh mm -hmm. and maybe the fly tying bible a couple books like that and i just started reading and uh following the picture step by step kind of thing and i, I didn't even really have a grasp at that point the difference between like nymphs and streamers and dry flies it's mm -hmm. just like different patterns you know right and it's a lot of it's just a accumulation of knowledge over time right yeah um but i did actually find a club i was uh was actually living in edmonton at this time in alberta and there's a club called the northern lights fly fishers and fly tires there oh cool and uh so that was that was a big catalyst uh for helping me along with the fly tying uh -huh. and it also gave me some people like like-minded people that I could uh, talk to about fly tying and uh, because a lot of these guys were locals and you know it's the community aspect they were uh, happy to share some of their tips you know and there was a few flies like every time we'd have a meeting I'd bring in my flies bring in my fly tying stuff and you know people could give me a, a few pointers on patterns and whatnot mm -hmm. And we also did a lot of uh, demos. So people, every week, uh, somebody else from the club would demo a couple patterns that they were tying, either oh, something nice. that that they were interested in or, you know, something you could use locally. Right. So there was a lot of still water type patterns in the area. So we yeah. have uh, what they call pothole lakes in Alberta. So it's just basically shallow ponds stocked with trout huh. um so you, you might be eight to 20 feet deep kind of thing mm -hmm. so a lot of the stuff that you're tying and fishing you're doing a lot of leeches uh chronomid patterns mayflies larva that sort of stuff yep cool cool um i was just thinking um again you know just kind of getting started and, and tips and things like that um I think that's where I first ran into um, your channel. I think I was looking for some extra tips for the, the fly tying challenge that I have going. And I believe I came across <laughs> your, I think that's where I first ran into you and I, and I checked in with you there. But if you had to give, um, you know, maybe a, a tip or, uh, you know, or two from, you know, you know, somebody that's just getting started and mm -hmm. at that same point where you're at back in the day, you know, what, what would you tell them when they're first getting going? Uh, well, if you're in a spot where there is a, a fly tying or a fly fishing club or like TU or mm -hmm. um, fly tires, definitely join. Mm -hmm. um, not only because you're going to learn uh, how to tie flies, but you're going to make some friends who are into fly fishing. So you've got people who will likely want to take you out fishing with them at some point as well and show you a couple of the local spots you might not know. Right. As far as fly tying goes, I think the number one thing to do is just uh, repetition, you know? Mm -hmm. Like the first time I fly, I tie basically any pattern, I don't think it looks that great. And by the, for me, about the third or fourth, it starts shaping up the way I like it. But mm -hmm. it, it all, always takes a little bit of trial and error, especially yep. when you're first learning, you know? yeah it's you don't you don't have that same consistency so no it uh just repetition in the patterns that you're doing and even the ugly ones i mean they're going to catch fish right yep. yeah not, they might not catch the fishermen as well <laughs> but they'll definitely catch the fish yeah yeah that's right nice um yeah so what uh what, what do you think it was that got you uh hooked on uh on fly tying or what, what's your what do you love most about it what keeps you going i mean tying you, you said you tie a fly just about you know, every day or every other day. That's, that's pretty awesome. That's, you know, that's a lot of days in a row. How, how did you, you know, what keeps you going? Um, I don't know. That's a tough question. I, I would maybe say that I'm a bit of a 
pack rat. If you could see my fly tying room here, you would confirm that, no mm -hmm. doubt. Mm -hmm. um, but I do like to collect things, and being a fly tire gives you the opportunity to collect uh, feathers and animal hairs and mm -hmm. all sorts of things, as well as the patterns themselves. So I don't yeah. know. I think it's just like there's a lot of different aspects that I like about yeah. it. Yeah, totally. Um, and it's I'm a bit more of a, a loner, not not really a loner, but I like my solitude, I suppose. So mm -hmm. it gives me an opportunity just to be on my own kind of thing, and mm -hmm. I actually really enjoy that. So cool, cool. Do you uh, do you get people? Do you I mean, is YouTube is is that kind of your the best channel that you? run into most of your people through is that do you get people that are contacting you quite a bit there um well i would say that youtube's sort of a new venue for me i've i've been on there for 10 years but mostly as an observer mm -hmm. so i've only really started uh posting what i would consider serious fly tying videos mm -hmm. since about uh april maybe um, so I have made a few contacts through there, which, like yourself, which is really great. Yeah. Do a little bit of cross promotion with channels and whatnot, which is mm -hmm. absolutely wonderful. Yeah. And I'd like to do more of that sort of thing in the future. But um, probably, as, as far as meeting people in the community, I guess uh, the fly tying forums for me were is mm -hmm. where I met quite a few people in the past. Um, I, I don't really visit them as much anymore as I used to. Yeah. Um, just part of it's just I don't have a lot of time to read through all the bulletin boards and everything. So yeah, I find it easier just to uh, find the videos I like in YouTube and kind of put them into my watch later list and turn them on and then start tying flies. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Well, do you have a uh, forum that sticks out as one that? you know you went to more often or there's somebody that was coming in on this might be able to go to are they all pretty good um i think if you're starting off uh fly tying forum .com, i guess would be the one i would hit mm -hmm. um it's and i haven't been there in a few years but yeah when i was going there at the time it was it was a pretty welcoming community um and people were fairly open to helping newbies with questions and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. cool but yeah. I, I, th I think the important thing is if you have a question, just try Googling it first. Cause a lot of times you'll go to some of the forums and you'll ask something and people kind of yell at you for not Googling oh, it first. So really, that's funny. <laughs> and it's, yeah. and I really, I don't like that. I mean, if someone's asking a question, they're asking it not because they're lazy and didn't Google oh, it. Yeah. They want your opinion, right? Exactly. But yeah. it doesn't hurt to Google it first. And yep. if uh, you don't find the answers that you're looking for, maybe try one of the forums like that. So Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's yeah that's probably the one that I, I went to the most. There were definitely a few others. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of them don't exist anymore, but... Uh, a few of them do <laughs> yeah nice no that was a good that's a good tip um so thinking a little bit about uh steelhead and salmon flies i know you, you tie a lot of those do you have a i was kind of thinking of my style you know i guess my, my style would probably be old school if i had to say you know if i had mm -hmm. a style but do you do you have a type of you know style you consider you know the way you tie or, or do you just um you know, or do you have a certain you know types of flies you like to tie more than others as far as steelhead and, steelhead and salmon flies? Um, well, as far as the style I like to tie is probably a bit of a cross between like an East Coast salmon fly and a West Coast steelhead fly. Mm -hmm. So they're sort of smaller. I guess it's similar to what uh, you would consider the classic steelhead. Yeah. So single hook. Um, you know, size six down to 10 sort of thing. Yep. But, but patterns like cold car, freight train, yep. golden demon, um, getting into some of the prawn patterns, uh, like monies or the general practitioner, stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, and definitely. it's, it's 
pretty iconic type stuff. So I've got a lot of older steel book, steelhead books like mm-hmm. from Trey Combs and the like. Yeah. And you know, like the patterns in there, it's it's a complete gold mine. It's uh, every time I open the book, there's more patterns in there that I want to try out, and uh, even some of the uh, club books that have been put out, like the Northwest Fly Fishers, mm-hmm. I think I believe. They put out a small book a few years or quite a few years ago, but there's quite a few patterns in there that uh, are really interesting. Uh, one other thing that I'd just add to that is a lot of these patterns have a bit of a history behind them as mm-hmm. well, which is another aspect of it that I really enjoy. Like uh, I find a lot of the modern flies, it's just there's there's no real story behind it. It's mm-hmm. just you know put together this way and that's it go yep. fish it but you. some of the older patterns you know like it, you, somebody was out on the river and got handed this pattern by who knows who right yep. you know just the friendliness of people that you run out into on the river you know like <laughs> i've done it myself quite a few times you know you stop to chat or whatever oh, yeah. and like here try this it's something i made up or whatever you know and uh you don't need credit for it or you don't need a fair trade or anything. It's just like, here, just try this and then you're on your way kind of thing. Yeah. And, uh, but it's the stories behind a lot of those flies that I kind of get more enjoyment out of, um, just being able to trace the lineage of it. Totally. Totally. No, that, that's really cool. I I was uh, thinking of, actually, I, I listened to uh, John Shuey in a recent, in a podcast a, a while back and, you know, I just, I knew, you know, I don't know John, but I know his stuff and, you know, we started to look through a little more back through his book and, you know, that's what he does a really good job of, I think, is kind of documenting the class. And that's his whole idea with, you know, probably one of his most popular books, um, Classic Steelhead Flies. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. But he documents the whole history and it's just cool to, you know, to hear that and because some of those, yeah, I mean, some of those will be lost. Yeah. Um, so it's one of those things where it's good. And you were actually the one that reminded me of it when we were chatting because I, I don't do a, a, always a good job of that in my videos. And I think it's something I'm going to try to do a, a little better job of where I can. And then also, you know, techniques for fishing them and things like that, I think is also great. Right. Yeah. I, I guess I kind of got that uh, mentality from doing the streamers project. So I did a lot of research in each of the flies and, uh, so we had a bit of history behind each one. Oh, and it, yeah. It, it might not even be an old fly or anything, but I like to kind of have a bit of an idea of what actually went into the process of creating this fly too, right? Mm-hmm. So what what were your reasons for picking this color or, you know, using this material at such and such a spot kind of mm-hmm. thing? Yep. Yeah, definitely. Sometimes it might be just you don't have the right material to tie that fly. And you, yeah. you know, you throw something different on and, and it works. Exactly. That's cool. So yeah. you mentioned the, um, the streamers, uh, probably is that the uh, streamers, uh, 365 project? Yeah, that's, uh, I guess a, an ambitious project that I figured I would take on. Uh-huh. Um, so basic, the basis of that was, I don't know if you've ever heard of drawing flies 365. No, it's, uh, Jeff Kennedy's project i think he did that back in 2010 if i remember correctly but basically he's an artist and he does some really incredible work and so january 1st he started his blog or started posting on his blog so the idea is every day you post one piece of your of your art so every day he would do a painting or sculpture or whatever and there's uh, a big uh, range of different uh, mediums that he used for his art. Uh, but yeah, if you haven't checked that out, I'm cool. pretty sure it's still up. Yeah. And uh, that was kind of the spark for me to do something like that because uh, I like doing projects like that. And sometimes I get myself into a little bit more than I can handle, but um this was something that I thought I could do. So I started planning it uh, 2011, I guess, and just kind of 
trying to get a lot of people involved. Um, so what basically what I did is look for some of the prominent streamer tires. And when I say streamer, I'm talking more the feather wing type traditional mm -hmm. northeastern, you know, main type streamers. Mm -hmm. uh, Carrie Stevens and Herb Walsh, that kind of stuff. Um, so the idea was just to present one streamer every day. And so one of the things that I really liked about that is a lot of these streamers, just like a lot of the steelhead flies, they come from the early 1900s. So they've got a good story behind them, right? Mm -hmm. So quickly that kind of snowballed. And I think at the end of it, we I had over 50 different fly tires from hmm. uh, mostly from the U.S. and Canada, but there were uh, people from... Uh, Great Britain, wow. Ireland, Australia, uh, Poland, um, and a few other countries. I think uh, Argentina as well. Wow! And how did so you we, how did you connect to all these people? How were this? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, a, a lot of different ways, I guess. Like yeah. Some people I knew already, but uh, like Streamer List is kind of uh, a form specifically aimed towards streamers. So. Okay. And that's uh, uh, a guy named Chris Del Plato. He runs that, and he's a pretty prominent uh, streamer tire. So he's been uh, in charge of that for quite a few years, I guess. Uh -huh. And it started out as a mailing list back in when, sure. kind of before forums, I guess. Everyone had mail lists, and <laughs> that's the way everybody communicated. Nice. Um, so, yeah, he kept that on it. That's still up. It's... Uh, not as active as it used to be, but there's still kind of a core group of guys oh, cool. that are on there. And a lot of it's really tailored towards streamers, but there's a little bit of uh, other type of chatter going on there as well, you know? Yeah, cool. I'll have to uh, yeah add some of this in the uh, in the show notes for once I uh, post the, uh, the summary of this uh, this interview here. So that, that's great. Mm -hmm. um, so what is, um, I was going to ask you, uh, the uh, maybe this is I'm not sure if this is connected or separate, but um, the Superfly project uh, you, you mentioned when we talked off air and uh, and Phil Ra uh, Raleigh. Oh, okay. Well, um, when I lived in Edmonton, there's a, a fly tying materials company up there called Superfly, and I worked for them for a year before I moved out to Ontario. Okay. Um, so. That was, depending on how you look at it, it was a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, the good thing is, you know, you're exposed to fly tying basically 24-7. So I got to chat with uh, shop owners and whatnot for most of the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I got a discount on fly tying materials, which was probably the dangerous part. Uh -huh. and, you know, like... <laughs> uh -huh. Yep. You know, you could spend spend half your salary on fly tying materials oh, yeah. every two weeks easily. So. Nice, but uh, yeah, it was it was a really good experience. And uh, Phil Rowley, he was the office manager there at the time, um, so I got to go fishing with him quite a bit and picked up quite a lot of knowledge about stillwater fishing. Okay, so he's known quite well for his stillwater and. Uh, in particular patterns like the chromie, uh, just like a, a chronomid pattern, a yeah. beadhead chronomid. And uh, there's a ton of variations. And yeah. so he, he kind of helped me hone my skills uh, tying skinnier, so using mm -hmm. less wraps to mm -hmm. make some of these patterns that are supposed to be pretty skinny to begin with, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's... Uh... I can't remember who I was talking to about that, but that's like the, uh, you know, like the old traditional Atlantic salmon flies where they're, you know, you got to really be um, particular on your wraps. And well, I guess it's the spay flies too, some of those where, you, where you, yeah. you can't put too many wraps on or it gets a little too bulky on you. Yeah. But, and I mean, that comes with experience. Um, I'm not sure if you know who Warren Duncan was. Yeah. But he was, yeah. I've... He was, he was a really popular, uh, east coast guy uh -huh. uh, from new brunswick i believe and um i had talked to him a few times he had a shop 
down in uh, New Brunswick. Okay. And I, I talked to him a few times before he passed away. But uh, he was particularly known for reciting poetry as he tied for us. <laughs> nice. And uh, if you go on YouTube, I believe there's still a video of him. That's sweet. And it, that's copied from a tele, uh, television program, uh, uh, which has him uh, tying uh, <laughs> his kind of his signature pattern, the uh, rusty rat. Yep. And uh, the, the poem that he recites is the cremation of Sam McGee. It's, oh, wow. It's pretty... Pretty, pretty amazing you yeah know? i'm gonna so, i'm definitely it, putting that i'm gonna find that one and put it in the show notes yeah it's uh probably my favorite fly tying video of all time so. oh yeah no that's awesome that's yeah. awesome i know i kind of occasionally some of the videos where i can't um talk while i'm doing it i'll throw some um you know some music on there i've been playing with that <laughs> but i know some people i've heard directly like do not put music on the video you know, they don't, oh, want, yeah. you know, they don't want to hear music in the background. So I usually don't do that, but cool. Um, so what about uh, fishing? Do you, do you still get out and do some fishing or do you have like, you know, if you have one place to go, is there a kind of a special place you like to, to go or type of fishing that you like to do? Um, I'm not too far from the Ganaraska and that's probably about 45 minutes from where I am. So if I have a free day, I'll pack up early and head out there mm -hmm. fish for a few hours head back um but it's it's not a long stretch of river it's uh maybe five miles i guess that you can fish mm -hmm. for the most part but it's uh it's got some interesting structure in there it's at one point i guess the uh the town or whatever it goes through a town called port hope in ontario and I think they um, laid concrete along the river. Hmm. So you've got all these, uh, sure. it's uh, it's breaking up now, but it's all, it's like steps, right? Yep. Um, so you get all these pools. So you can fish all these pools with uh, dry flies, basically. Hmm. And uh, you have all these small resident uh, brown trout and rainbows that come up from Lake Ontario. Okay. And. Nothing huge, but yeah. uh, it's the same rivers that uh, the steelhead and the salmon come up later oh, in the nice. fall nice. as well. But if you go there during the summer, things are pretty quiet, you know? Like, yeah. Nobody's really after these smaller fish. Gotcha. So if you want the solitude, that's kind of the place to be. Cool. Cool. And are you fishing, uh, are you fishing uh, dries or nymphs or a little both? Um, I usually do both. And uh, uh, sometimes I'll take two rods and I'll string one up with a dry fly and one with a, a weighted nymph or something like that. Mm -hmm. And just as I move along the river, just depending on the water conditions, I'll swap out rods just so I'm not having to switch up flies so often. Sure. Because I still want to use the same flies just in different yeah. uh, water conditions you know you hit a deep pool i like to throw a nymph in there <laughs> if mm -hmm. uh, nothing hits the dry fly you know yep yep definitely cool and is that river so with the um uh, the rot or the concrete in there is it kind of a fast flowing river river and that creates pools or is it like a slow slower flatter type river um i wouldn't say it's a fast river but it yeah. fluctuates over the depends with the rain like as soon that, as it oh, rains right. you'll you'll get a lot of water coming through there yep um but it's if if you haven't had rain for two or three days it's it's a fairly low flow okay you know and are you into the um kind of uh you know nymphing like traditional nymphing style i guess or do you have a special special technique i know a lot of the kind of the euro nymphing i guess is something i really haven't uh, gotten into too much but you know you hear a lot about it do, do you uh, do you get into any of that uh, no, I generally fish with a shorter rod. So uh, a lot of times I'm using uh, like a 6.6 six rod, like a, oh, wow. a one weight or a two weight. Oh, cool. Some of these creeks are really small. So I don't want to like yeah. a, a regular nine foot rod because I'll just be yep. back casting into weeds all day kind of thing. Yeah, that's cool. So actually, actually a friend of mine, he turned me on to that kind of a rod and I ended up buying a mm -hmm. uh, a bamboo six six three weight a few years ago oh, and sweet. it 
especially when you're hitting some of the smaller fish you know like 12 inches or so it kind of evens things out Uh uh-huh doesn't feel like you're picking them out with a a big stick or something totally Totally. yeah that was that was always the thing i you know with like the the big spay rods back in the day we always joked about that that you know you're pulling the steel (laughs) with these monster rods but now i mean the rods are so light there's there's almost no difference between that and a single-handed rod yeah for sure cool um so what are you if you had to just clarify everything you know you're doing online have we talked about um you know kind of what you're focused on or is there anything else you know we missed as far as your websites i think you have don't you have a third website you you have out there um i've got a number of them but uh i've the one that i kind of focus on nowadays i guess is piscator flies and okay. that's where I, I sell the flies that i tie gotcha. through there and uh through ebay as well oh cool um but when i first started up and uh, i was just kind of getting interested i used to do a lot of web development that type of stuff um and i thought hey it'll be cool to learn fly fishing and make a website about it so when i first started out i did a lot of uh step-by-step picture tutorials kind okay. of before video was really a thing mm-hmm. before youtube was youtube yeah i think it used to be google video <laughs> when uh, we first started and uh but uh mm-hmm. things have changed so much yeah in, in such a such a uh, short time it's incredible yeah yeah it is yeah. it is definitely um i mean i guess for the better i guess there's some things that aren't aren't the better it seems like we're more online and maybe disconnected from the well we've had a lot of local fly shops that have gone out of business in our area yeah and i guess that's just part of the amazon revolution and stuff but yeah it's a different world i guess Uh, i mean the good there's good and there's bad that that go with it so i think i think the good one of the good things is being able to do this i probably would never have connected with you if it wasn't for how we've gone with uh, all the online stuff yeah definitely you never know who you're gonna run into i've made quite a few uh who I, who i would consider friends through the internet and you know like when i do actually go out into the world and travel i've met quite a few of them um over the years you know mm-hmm. and uh so i mean it's yeah it, it's hard to think that uh um what people did before the internet because <laughs> you know like you'd have to actually go out to meet people like even to go find someone to go fishing with uh it would have to be word of mouth or you know like but now you've got whole communities of people right at your disposal and it's you know anybody want to go fishing you know you can send out a tweet or whatever you know like yeah hopefully hopefully you still have to be cautious right yeah end up uh (laughs) neck deep in a pool somewhere but <laughs> no uh, i yeah. haven't had any bad experiences let's just say that so. yeah so i think most people are pretty good i was just thinking uh, i had i did an interview with jim teen i think we chatted about that a little bit but he he made the point that you know he's been in this you know industry fly fishing for you know i think he's coming on 60 years yeah. and uh, he made the point that you know that's the biggest thing it's the the friendships and the connections and it seems like every person I talked to kind of has connected with him, you know, over the years. And, you know, I think that's kind of the thing at the end of the day, when you look back, you're like, you know, it's, it's good people, you know, and I, I've done some stuff, other businesses and things. And yeah, it's not the same, it's not the same people as it is in fly fishing and fly tying. So I think that's one of the, the really cool things. I think most of the people are pretty, you know, kind of good people to hang around. So that's, what's nice. Yeah, I think so. For the most part, uh, I mean, every, place has their bad apples but yep uh, i was actually surprised how honest a lot of people in fly fishing are you know when they could easily rip me off or something mm-hmm. you know but yeah you know <laughs> yeah totally hey uh, so what's your um so i was just thinking you're were, you're were saying uh selling flies if, if there was somebody out here listening to this that was you know maybe they're have a lot of experience fly tying but haven't sold many flies yet do you have any any tips for them that would help them maybe get into the, into the, you know, fly fishing industry or just kind of the business selling flies? I mean, how did you, how did you get into it? Um, for me, I just, you know, like I was tying for quite a while and I felt my 
flies were looking pretty good. And I had given a bunch away to other anglers and friends, and they seemed genuinely impressed with them. So I just started throwing them up on eBay at one point and seeing if anybody was interested. And, you know, uh, pretty much everything I put up there sold fairly no kidding. quickly. And yeah. And uh, so then I like eBay is another kind of channel but it's uh hard there's a lot to learn like how to market your listings i guess right yeah so that's you know you have to know how to target it i guess yeah and how to list it so that and that's it's it was uh i guess like you don't really even think about it now but it was a lot of uh learning that went into it just yeah. to figure out how to get stuff posted and what would actually sell right yeah is it still something uh still profitable for you is it something that have you seen a lot more people on it now and harder to sell flies um i would say that ebay's changed quite a bit over the years it used to be uh a lot of people selling things like that they wanted to get rid of or there was some people doing flies or estate sales that sort of thing but they've kind of changed their focus over the last few years they want to uh reward some of the sellers who are just using the buy it now rather than having auctions for things mm, right sure so i don't actually do auctions very often anymore everything's yep. listed by price gotcha um i think if i was gonna start over again i would look at ebay but also maybe amazon as well but that's, like I said, it's another learning curve. Yeah. Scene, learning two different systems, and it's yep. somewhat complicated, I guess. Yeah. Uh, well, we should so... we should maybe talk <laughs> maybe talk more off air on that, um, so, so we don't uh, dig in too far. But yeah, I know I know quite a bit about Amazon. I've done some. That's one of the things I got into Amazon and right. didn't, didn't get into eBay. But um, but yeah, I think there's good and bad of again of any channel you're on and. You know, it, yeah. it's yeah. I guess there there are people selling flies on on Amazon as well. I, I guess I really never noticed. I think you know that's the thing about fly fishing is it, it's really not a huge, it's not a huge industry. You know, it's fairly small when you think about it compared to other, you know, other outdoor uh, niches. Yeah, well, even within the fishing industry, I'd say like the fly fishing is less than ten percent. Yeah. And fly tying's even smaller even right smaller yeah so it's this tiny little niche which is cool because it's small but i think it probably makes selling things a, a little more challenging because there's just not as big of a crowd out there um, yeah but that, and i mean your reputation is everything in such a small community too yeah. right yeah exactly exactly nice okay um let's see so yeah i think we're doing good here um maybe you could take i'm not sure if you want to chat a little bit about um um, you, you mentioned the liver um, uh, issue you went through, and uh, do you want to do you want to talk a little more about that? And uh, did that affect you know kind of your the fly fishing? It sounded like that that kind of got you into fly tying. Yeah, well, that's kind of when like I started fly tying before I fly fished at all. Oh, okay. So I had I had never actually fly fished at that point. Oh, cool. So I tied I tied flies before I yeah. Uh, even through my first cast. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, and, but it was something, you know, like I had seen fly fishermen around when I was fishing trout ponds or whatever. Sure. I, I thought, you know what? That looks pretty cool. You can kind of mimic the bugs that are on the water. Mm -hmm. And I, rather than throwing whatever I'm offering the trout, because it didn't seem to work very well. Um, so I, I think it was a, uh, a good catalyst you know like just for getting into it and mm -hmm. giving me that push yeah to try fly tying and fly fishing so i think that christmas my wish list was just for a fly rod and <laughs> my father-in-law obliged nice. <laughs> so and then now he's hitting me up for flies all the time <laughs> yeah so yeah. so you're giving them away to him or are you charging them i give them to oh, him nice. all right <laughs> He tries to pay me sometimes. Who knows if it happens or not? Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. Um, 
What is the, um, so Fly Fusion Magazine, that's definitely a, a big magazine that's out there. You, you had mentioned, uh, you know, we, we chatted on email that um, you had you had a connection there. What's, um, can you clarify what, what your connection is with that, with the magazine? Yeah, um, well, it's, uh, let's see, I guess it goes quite a ways back. Um, so Fly Fusion Magazine, they used to host some of the fly fishing uh, forums and exhibitions in Canada. So I think they have one in Calgary, Alberta, that they do every year now. And uh, so I was included as part of that. And with Fly Fish Calgary, I helped run that, which is something that they had some ownership in as well. Um, and as part of that, I was writing a column called Hooks and Half Hitches. Hmm. And that's where I came up with my sign-off line and keep a hook in your vice. So I used to sign off all my articles with that. Oh, okay. But basi- basically, it was uh, taking one aspect of fly tying. So it might have been streamers or uh, nymphs or uh, tying with CDC, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I think I wrote for them for maybe four or five years somewhere around there Mm -hmm. and uh i enjoyed it for a while but it's you know your your life gets busy Mm -hmm. and it's harder to uh, keep focus on deadlines stuff like that yeah Uh, so uh eventually i gave that up and when you take on all these projects at some point you have to start downsizing as well so yeah yeah you can't do it uh, all no (laughs) need more hours in the day every day yeah 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 i'm starting to realize that just with thinking about my schedule and posting and i mean you see some well you know some of the youtubers like um some of the bigger ones are posting just about every day and Mm -hmm. you know i think about trying to keep up i've been trying to do that this month just for the you know for the challenge the flight time challenge i mentioned but but it's it's not easy to do so uh, I'd imagine that though they're kind of um, posting things and scheduling things out and, and doing that. But yeah, I mean, I, I try to keep up a schedule, but do you have like some sort of a, you know, a plan and a certain schedule that, that you post your, your videos and stuff? Um, not really. It's uh, when I've got some free time, I do want to yeah. <laughs> post it. That's about it. Yeah. But uh, um, definitely, I would like to have a little bit more consistency in the amount that I post. And even if it's just once a week, Mm -hmm. be able to do that or twice a week. Um, When my fly tying schedule is a little bit lighter, I can definitely put a video up every day. But Mm -hmm. uh, during the fall, it's almost impossible. There's days when I'm tying uh, upwards of 300 flies. So just to be able to, put a video in there doesn't i would i would be dead by now for sure it would just be too much you know so you're going strong so you're tying i mean do you have like um kind of set uh clients that that you kind of tie for do you get a a good mix of new people coming through the door um it's a mix i get quite a few new clients i've got a few shops Mm -hmm. that i tie for and a few different businesses that I'll tie for a few times a year. They'll put in orders, that sort of Mm -hmm. thing. And uh, then I get a lot of people uh, contacting me for uh, special stuff. So custom orders, stuff that you can't find online or Mm -hmm. they're looking for, you know, like they'll go online and they'll find a picture and say, can you tie this for me? And I say, send me the picture. And if I know what's in it, I can, I can usually do it, but Mm. Uh, yep. For the most part, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How do but you... uh, once, once in a while, somebody will send you a picture of like a, a fully dressed green Highlander or something, yep. you know, and say, "I need four dozen." Mm. You're know, like, "Not me." <laughs> totally, or I, um, yeah, or something that requires a lot of, yeah, just a technique maybe you don't do all the time. Yeah. I mean, trimming deer hair, things like that, can be time consuming. What, what's your? Do you ever? How do you avoid? Um, I just think about the burnout thing because I kind of came a little bit different from you. I started, um, I grew up kind of around a fly shop when I was a little kid and I was tying, mm-hmm. I was tying dozens of flies a day back when I was probably, you know, 12 or something like that. And and I kind of got burnout 
you know, early on, well, yeah. other things happen, but is there a way you, um, you know, you're able to avoid that? Uh, for me, I mean, I just have to take a break every once in a while, you know, and just realize that the vice is going to be there tomorrow. Yeah. And, uh, if, if I didn't have other things in my life, I might just sit there all the time. But I mean, I've got a son that I take care of primarily. So I got to mm-hmm. make sure he's taken care of as well. And he gets off to school and, um, just, uh, you know, the rigors of life kind of thing. Yep. I hear so you. I have enough of a break during the day that it's not going to kill me, but there's days when I'm tying 14 or 15 hours. <laughs> yep. And there's other days when, you know, I might just watch YouTube videos and tie a dozen or something. Who knows? Yeah. Do, do you find that pretty much, um, you know, every fly that comes through the door you want to tie it is on YouTube or are there some things you get requests for that, that are just, you know, not there? Um, there's, I would say it's probably about half and half. Okay. Um, but some guys still ask me to tie like a local pattern. So it could be something that, uh, somebody gave them mm-hmm. and it's when you go to look it up to do a bit of research on that, there's not much, like you might be lucky to find a picture of it or something, you yeah. know? Yeah. So that's when, uh, a lot of the, having a, a good library at your disposal comes in handy. Yep. Cause a lot of the patterns in there, uh, just aren't online. Yeah. You know? Yep. Definitely. Cool. Um, so what is, if you're looking, you know, <laughs> let's, let's look out maybe, uh, we're, we were talking about a hundred years back in the past and some of these old ones. If, <laughs> if you're to look, uh, a hundred years in the future, you know, we're, we're both gone and people are, you know, kind of looking at, you know, your stuff and you and what you've done. Is there something you would kind of, you know, you'd like to be remembered, um, you know, for or something you did or just, you know, in the fly fishing, fly tying world? Oh, wow. Um, well, I think probably the thing I'm most proud of is just the Streamers 365 project that we did. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I, you know, looking back on it, it was a lot of work and it took a lot of uh, perseverance just to keep up the posting every day so that was 366 yeah. flies and then oh. i also wow. took all those and uh put them into books so i've got three volumes of uh books so basically we took the photograph the recipe and the background info from each of those flies and put into a book huh. so it's uh <laughs> wow that is amazing yeah, that took a lot. It took a lot of work, and just even organizing that many people, and because uh, I asked them to submit their flies, so yep. basically you make contact with somebody, and wow, uh, after they send you some flies, you gotta do the research on them and make sure all the materials are listed when you post them, and do some of the background research, take the photographs, edit, yep. put the post up. Um, and then promote it. (laughs) That's impressive. (laughs) It's a, it's a lot of work here, you know, like to take on by yourself. So I was pretty glad when the year was over. Um, but I, I continued the project for the next couple of years at a lower scale. So I think I did the next year we did bucktails after the feather wings, we did bucktails and hair wings. And I just did that, uh, maybe twice a week, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think we ended up doing a hundred flies and I didn't do a book for that one. Yeah. So, and, uh, so I do post on there, on there still once in a while, okay. but it's not, uh, nothing too important. Like what? if I do a tutorial on YouTube, uh, for a streamer, I'll usually post it on there. Okay. So you post it on, uh, so, and this is, uh, what's the uh, streamers 365.com. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So you post, uh, you do a blog post there and then you also, uh, have a YouTube video for it. Right. Oh, cool. Right. Man, that is, yeah, that's an amazing project. That sounds like definitely a lot of work. I mean, 365, um, <laughs> patterns. I was just, just talking, I mean, 30 days of, you yeah. know, kind of thing. And I, it was, yeah. it was actually 366 cause it was a leap year. Right? Oh, there you go. And then, <laughs> there were actually a couple extras in there. I think on, uh, independence day I oh, yeah. published, four of Carrie Stevens patterns just because uh-huh. she has the 
patriotic series oh, yeah. with the America. Um, I can't remember them all offhand. Uh-huh. But... <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> yeah. No, that's... So, but it was it was it was definitely a big uh, a big project, and I'm not eager to take on something like that again anytime yeah. soon. But you know, I might have a lot of free time in the future, and it might be something I do again. Something different, though, not uh, with streamers, but yeah, definitely with fly tying, you know. Okay, so so basically, all that content you have a uh, it all into a book form, but it's all on online there at that, at that website. It is, yeah. Oh, great, great, yeah. I'll definitely, uh, definitely take a look, uh, d- dig into that. That's that's really cool. Um, so yeah, I guess we're we're uh, got a few more questions here for you. We're we're getting uh, getting closer to wrapping this thing up, but um, I wanted to just looking again into the, you know, the future, a little more short term, um, anything, you know, over the next, you know, few months to a year, that's kind of exciting to you. Something that, you know, sounds like you got a lot, lot to uh, definitely keep you busy, but is there anything that really sticks out? Something maybe people can keep up with you on? Um, I think, you know, like now since my, uh, the busiest part of my tying seasons is, uh, gone, I want to try and focus a little bit more on the YouTube stuff. So if you're looking for some fresh content, just make sure that uh, you signed up to follow on my YouTube channel, which is uh, under the Piscator Flies okay. on YouTube. And uh, that's probably the best spot. Okay. So they can yeah. uh, track you there. And then um, – and I was going to – uh, had just a couple other questions here. Uh, thinking about, I've you know definitely a lot of the flies. Well, I've been tying. I've been trying to with, you know, as of late, just trying to tie a bunch of the classic style kind of hair wing flies. But I'm yeah. going. To, I'm going to be getting in and and trying to mix it up a little bit and do some of the. Um, I like that idea of kind of doing some, you know, different types of flies. You know, a week here, a week there, um, which, which I'm kind of getting into some trout flies and stuff. Um, so that's cool. Um, do you do anything that's like kind of on the trout, the really small, you know, kind of little trout stuff, little dry flies? Is that something you, you, you tie? Do you pretty much tie everything? Um, <clears throat> I do. I kind of stay away from the dry flies for the most part because there's a lot of commercially done stuff. And uh, so if people want like atoms and stuff like that, it's not – I don't want to – end up tying stuff like that i'll do it for my own personal use but i don't generally tie it for clients unless they request it but it's not something i advertise um i do a a few different caddis patterns i I suppose and um maybe a few different uh cdc mayflies that sort of thing okay yeah but uh yeah it's definitely i'm kind of the same way they uh some of those tiny little, you know, the dry fly stuff is, is pretty metic- <laughs> meticulous. <laughs> yeah, well, I've, I've seen uh, Sean McQuaid over yeah. at McFly. He's been tying some smaller stuff in the 20s, oh, yeah. uh, little midges. And yep. he thinks I might be able to do it. I, I'm not so sure. <laughs> well, the nice thing about the little, the 20s, the old, I think the only nice thing, actually, I just realized this last year, that I need glasses, which is, uh, you know, which is kind of a, uh, I guess that's what happens when you turn 40, you kind of start yeah. to realize, okay. <laughs> and it made a huge difference, but, um, but that was the cure. That was tough there. But, um, you know, when you tie the smaller ones, there's not as much material. So I guess for the most part, they're a little more basic. So that, I guess was one good thing about them maybe. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think if you're going to tie small flies, you start with a bigger one and scale down from yeah, there right that's true start with a 16 try an 18 kind of yep. dial that in and do a 20 i was in a fly swap years ago where it was uh size 22 and smaller and Jeez. i think that's probably the last time i tied anything that small wow and i and i just did sort of a basic thing yep uh, if you want to see uh some small flies yeah. look up don don ordes don ordes o-r-d-e-s okay and he ties a uh, Royal Coachman on oh, wow. size thirty-two. No way. On the on the smaller Mustad one. Jeez. And it's you need a microscope to see that thing, that but crazy. somehow he figures it out. So. Wow. That is, <laughs> and yeah. he also ties them on the other end where he's tying on uh, shark hooks, so like yeah. fifteen, sixteen yep. odd hooks, and it's oh yeah, 
insane. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, I'll, I'll look that so good stuff. I'll uh, connect to that. Cool. So I think that's uh, about it. Did you have uh, anything else that we missed or you wanted to, you know, uh, talk about um, as far as kind of just anything fly tying or fishing related? No, I think we kind of pretty much covered everything that was on my mind, perhaps. Okay. So. Okay. Cool. Cool. And yeah. uh, and like you said, uh, piscatorflies dot com is the best place they can find you and subscribe to your YouTube channel and um, connect with connect with you. I've actually been. It's been good since we kind of did the the guest tying. I've definitely a few of your uh, you know, your video, uh, your audience there connected with me and definitely had some good things to say about you. So it's, uh, yeah, I think if anybody, uh, comes across this, uh, it will, it'll be a good way to connect with you there and I'll keep in touch with you as well. So, um, all right, Darren, well, that's, that's all I have. Um, I guess I'll keep in touch with you and we'll maybe share another video down the line and, and maybe we can find another project to work on. All right. That sounds great. Thanks, Dave. All right. Thanks a lot. Cheers. See ya. Okay, there you have it. Thanks, Darren, for the great episode. Uh, if you want to check in with Darren, you can go to piscatorialflies.com, where Darren shares a bunch of his videos and links. Um, if you want to check out any of the links that we talked about in this episode, episode go to wetflyswing.com, and we can get you, get you hooked up there. If you have any questions, send me an email, um, and I hope to see you very soon. Thanks again for stopping by, and we will catch you on the flip side.